this is when she was at the peak of her star. And she comes out, she sings her first song, and she did not like the way her stage monitors were just laid out and giving her vocal. So she steps back, and she's not going to sing one more note until they're just the way she likes them. She turns and signals to a stagehand to mount and sort out her monitors. I had to be the first guy behind the curtain. Uh, I'm not going out there in front of 20,000 people, so I turn around and start to show one of the young bucks out. It's like, guys, what pull on your boss? Uh, you know, this thing called pride? Well, we're going to take a really big chunk out of it tonight, so you get your happy buns out there because you work for me now. You know, <laughs> and I don't have to do with slackers. So I suck it up, and I walk out on that stage, and wouldn't you know it, in order for me to make the monitors just the way she wanted them, I had to get down on my knees. And the front row, this place seated like 20,000 people, the front row started about, or maybe the third row was here, and just went back up in the hillside. I'm on my knees, and I'm looking up straight into the faces of all the record company presidents and famous producers that I used to be one of. And I'm looking at them, and they're looking at me like frogs blinking in a hailstorm, you know. <laughs> they, they've been wondering what happened to Kim Anselm, now they do, you know. And I looked up in that night sky, and I said, Lord, Father, God, this is the single most humiliating moment in my life. But Lord, Father, God, I love you more than anything I've ever loved. I for me, what you want for me more than anything I ever want. Father, you saved me out of the pits of hell. Father, I get it. Game on. I raised those monitors yeah. like monitors in the range in the history of rock and roll. They still talk about August 17th, 1987, <laughs> the Whitney Houston concert. <laughs> those monitors were raised into the Lord, and you can't do better than that. Can you? God loved me so much that he knew I had to go through so I could be broken. Now here's the good news, and this is about the good news, because God is the single greatest economist of all time. He will use our past, good, bad, and different for his glory. It doesn't matter how stinking wretched your life has been or how long it's been. You know, maybe you're the kind of person that's only committed one little bitty sin in your life. Or maybe, why is everybody looking down? <laughs> or maybe you're a little bit more like me, who had a long and city, nasty, horribly bad, ugly life. It doesn't matter, you can bring that one little bit of sin to him, or you can bring that whole stinking mess. God's promise, all mistakes are forgotten, all sins are forgiven, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 